Welcome, welcome back, Sly Guitar. Let's talk about it. First off, uh, thanks so much for watching my first video of, of the new year. Um, so much. You guys watched a ton. Lots of views, lots of comments. Uh, it was a warm welcome back, and I, I appreciate it, so thank you for that. Um, but yeah, I, I asked what you wanted to hear about, and... Um, more than a few folks said they wanted to hear about how I thought about playing slide. Now, I have my Charlie Brown Snoopy cup, by the way. Um, like I'm matching. I have sort of a matching hat with, with Charlie. But anyways, that was unplanned. Um, just the wonderful things that happen on the internet. Um, anyways, <laughs> talking about playing, playing slide, um, I've got a couple videos just talking about like little tricks and tips and like I guess they're more like lick things that I use um, to play slide mostly since I play in standard tuning to kind of make it sound like I'm playing in more like an open E open tuning kind of thing um, but I don't ever play in open tuning I'm, I'm pretty strictly a standard tuning slide kind of guy when I first started you know thinking about messing with it I thought about trying the open tuning thing and it just, you know, for me, for my brain, it was that was daunting because I felt like I had put so much into understanding the neck, um, you know, in in standard tuning. I don't know. It just seemed like a hassle to, to relearn, to rethink about what I was doing. Um, plus, there were a ton of songs that I wanted to be able to pick the slide up, play a solo, play a part, and then go back to playing, you know, nor normal guitar. Um, at least that's how I started out. So, always been a slide and standard tuning guy. I've said before, then when I realized that there, there were guys that I loved, like Warren Haynes, who, who you know, plays primarily standard tuning as well. Um, yeah, I was kind of sold. But I do feel like there are a couple ways you, you need to think about things slightly differently than when you're just playing regular guitar, not non-slide guitar. Um, you know, when you're soloing or you're playing, whether you're soloing or playing rhythm or whatever, and you're not wearing a slide, you know, it's really easy to get caught up and, you know, just going up and down the scale. Um, and that's great, and it's fine. By the way, um, I'm playing through my Super O Comet, Trusty Telly. Um, most of the dry, the Comet is cranked, but it's running through the Captor X. So you're actually hearing a weird combination of it attenuated behind me and behind where my phone is sitting, <laughs> you're hearing sound also out of the my little studio monitors. Um, that seems to work out good. Running through my pedal board, um, and you're hearing most of the dirt, other than what's coming through the car, the comment. Because like I said, it's it's up pretty pretty high. Um, you're hearing mostly the Tone Tuga FX Aegis, which I love. There's an affiliate link to Tone Tuga FX, by the way, in the description. So if you decide you want some of those pedals or check out any of their stuff. Songbird, the Delphine, and the Aegis are, are probably my favorites. Those are all fantastic. So anyways, check that out if you want. If you don't, no big deal. Um, but it's there. <coughs> also, the Delphine Delay, I have that on. Just just a little bit, a slide back. That That's part of playing slide, right, is your tone. You know, I love the com the comment for, for slide because, um, uh, you know, it's, it's such a, like, sort of mid-focused amp. It's got a 10-inch speaker. I think that works really well for the slide stuff. In some, a lot of ways, it works better than my magnetone stuff um, because of that. Um, with maybe the exception of my old magnetone that is back there somewhere behind me. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. The 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 M10. Um, it's got that kind of old, weird, mid mid heavy sort of thing too. Um, so it it does it really well. But the Twilighter, not so much. Um, Super 15 is just different. Um, but anyways. So yeah, so that is part of it, right? You need a tone that, even if it's not dirty, that it's a little little compressed so you have some sustain. Um, and that can be a loud, clean amp, or it can be a dirtier amp. Just somewhere you gotta have some some sustain going if you want the sort of singing kind of slide notes. Um, and then, you know, when I first picked up slide, the first thing I ever wanted to learn slide for was the beginning of Freebird. <laughs> you know the little, uh, the little. Uh, that that thing. Um, you know, you guys know what it is. 
Um, and it's just, you know, it's on one string. It's a melody. And then so for the longest time, I'm talking years, the, the extent of my slide playing was thinking of a scale on one string in a straight line. And I would just, you know, noodle as if I was playing a scale with my fingers, but just, you know, in a linear fashion. Um, you know, and if you throw on a bunch of delay and reverb, um, that's really pretty. Um, same thing, playing like kind of church stuff for a while, you know, washy reverb delay and a slide, do some cool lines. Um, you know, there's a couple songs that had that kind of stuff in it. Um, and you know, I just always felt like that was, that was pretty inadequate, especially when you listen to somebody like, you know, Dwayne Allman, or you listen to Derek Trucks, or, um, you know, Sonny Landry, somebody like that who's a real ridiculous slide player, Warren Haynes, anybody, those guys, they're, they're not just doing that. They're doing other stuff. And, uh, you know, in my brain, in the beginning, part of that was that, you know, it was it was open tunings. But as I grew as a player without a slide, I started, you know, knowing more about triads and arpeggios and how to build chords um, and I realized I did not have to think of lead all the time as just going up and down a scale shape. Started to think more in, you know, chord tones. And like I said, triads were a big thing for me. So when I started using triads up and down the neck, um, so like if I wanted an E, instead of having to play an E, you know, there all the time, being able to play like that as an E and realizing that that is an E. And then starting to see that, hey, here's an E. And that that is the same shape as like a G. So, you know, when you're playing an open G, and this 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 talk is more the psychology, psychology is maybe too fancy a word, the thought process of playing slide versus like particular licks. If you want particular licks, go find the last slide video that I did. You might have to search a little bit. Uh, if I think about it, I'll try to link it in the description, put the link in the description, but I'm horrible at those things. So if I forget, forgive me, but I'll try to remember to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, this is more of a thought process. But but anyways, like this is a G chord, right? If you play it at one note at a time, you get this these, this A shape right here, just like that's an A. You know, and you can kind of outline that you, you know, if you were thinking of an A, it's easy to see as an A. And you were thinking from the D string, two, two, uh, two, and then down to five on that same B string, and then five right there, all those notes are in an A chord. And I'm forgetting the open string because we're obviously not going to play the open string with the slide um, and we're not going to play it up the neck. So if that is a major chord, anywhere you move that to, right? If I move it up, A, B, C. If I move it to the fifth fret, it's a C. So if I got a slide on, those three notes they happen to be in a straight line guess what else is a straight line in my slide there's a C and then if I slide over to these two notes on the B and the also a C so I got on the D string five 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 so D string G string B string and then from the B string over to eight and then high E string eight there's in a C chord. So if I'm in the key of C, all those notes, first off, they're all fair game because no matter what, I might not want to hit them all together. If I know it's a C chord, I can hit them all together. I think where you can actually see my hand, you know. But even without it, just like a scale, I can play all those notes. sounds really good if I know the chords in the song really well and I know the next chord is F if I know the next chord is G there's my three major chords like in the key of C, C. shape but <laughs> anyways so you know what I mean like so right there 
I'm starting to play things that don't just sound like. Instead, maybe I play C major pentatonic all in a straight line. Which sounds fun, but you never get that rub that I think is great with slide when you're like an open slide guy. They hit two or three strings together and you know, all those harmonics stringing out with the slide. It's just fantastic. Like that's the sound I sort of want to hear. And then you can add in those single lines. And that's why it's so important. I've got a video about this too. Um, to know all the shapes of your scale so that you can take one string and you can move up and down. So like there, I'm just, I'm going up and down the scale and then finally hitting the C. And remember, all those notes in the C chord are gonna work over most of the stuff. Well, not most of, all of the stuff in the key of C because they all share notes, right? So that's how I started to think about it. Those, those A shaped triads with the single note lines. And there's a few things and I, I didn't want to get into specific licks, but if you start to know like where your notes are, like when you play that triad, if you know that on the G string is the root note and that the third is on the B string, you can start to do things like, okay, if this is the root note, there's the flat seven. There's the regular old, the major, you know, the major seven. Here's a flat third to a major third, to a fourth, to a fifth. So now I can kind of like, I've got the pentatonic shape right there. If I'm feeling super fancy, I got the whole diatonic shape right there. Plus the triad, plus flat third to major third, fourth, fifth, the major seventh, the flat seventh, and I can start to craft things like. And I can play lines like that all day over stuff in the key of C, and if I know the song really well, I can play something like that and then go to the next chord and do the same thing. You know what I mean? But even if I don't, that kind of, instead of my pentatonic shape being my roadmap of things I can, you know, essentially noodle, I can noodle from that shape with that stuff added if it's bluesy. If it's not bluesy, maybe I add this stuff. The point is you don't want to always just think of scale in a straight line. You want to think about how, how you build that chord in a way that you can wrap the slide around it. And that's a pretty good roadmap. You know, five, 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 eight, eight. And that's for C. If it was the key of E, like I was jamming in, you know, I was thinking E major when this whole thing started. I was doing it on the ninth fret. A, B, C, D, E. So like there's an E chord, like an A shape or like a G shape. They're, they're the same really. You know, here's my E. There are things about like how you move the slide. Like I'm kind of raking, you know, like you saw me rake that. Just like if I was doing it with my finger, I'm actually, I'm tilting my slide to get that. Um, that was tricky. Some little things like that, that maybe, maybe I don't need, I don't even know. I could be wrong about this. In my brain, you don't have to worry about some of those things as much. Maybe if you're playing in an open E or an open tuning, but maybe you do. I, I don't know. Um, but I, you know, I do, I pay a lot of attention to manipulating my slide, a lot of attention. It's uh, so much of it is about muting because if you are playing single notes, you know, you don't always want to like, if I play a note here and I come down to the eighth fret and it's in C, I don't want the eighth fret on the G string ringing out. So I had to make sure I mute it, but I might've wanted them ringing out on the fifth fret together. Like when I slid over to eight, 
I made sure that I muted that string with my palm. Now, that's why a lot of guys play slide with their fingers, so those fingers can lay on the strings. And I do sometimes, but I'm a hybrid picker, so I tend to have my pick anyways. But with, you know, with your fingers. It is really easy that way, you know, to mute the strings you don't want. Plus, if you're like, and again, I do this with my pick, so nothing wrong with doing it with your with your pick. But like if I play a long note and I want it to kind of sing. All the notes besides that B string that I was just playing, I had muted because when I'm doing it, when I'm doing the vibrato, you're gonna get slide noise if you don't. You know, no big deal. The thing you want to avoid, and the thing that I did not avoid in the beginning, which made me sound like an idiot, is, you know, you're not playing necessarily like up and down a scale like that with the slide the whole time. That just makes you sound like you might as well not be playing a slide, right? And you also, if you can view like longer intervals, like so if you're playing the C, then I can visualize that way down here is another C. You know, take take advantage of, of using the slide. Take advantage of the really aggressive, like the the cool wide vibrato you could do with a slide. Um, that's that's my thought process always when I'm when I'm playing slide. And I by no means honestly think that I am like a I'm a, I'm an okay slide player at best. There are guys who are like amazing slide players. I'm a I'm an okay slide player. Um, I just, I really enjoy it, you know, and so I've gotten good enough at it that I, you know, the songs I enjoy playing, I, I can do what I want to do. Um, I'd be in trouble probably if I just play slide all night, but if I, you know, every four or five songs, if I can play slide, it's awesome. Um, I love it. I love, I love it. I love the way it sounds. I'm always trying to get better at it. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the thing. So, so for me, if we're getting into how I think about playing slide. It's that. It's the triads are the biggest thing. And then knowing where to add in the flat third to the major third. The, you know, going from the one back to the flat seven. Knowing where the five is in every chord. You know, you can you can do a lot of improvising on that. Just on that, just on the one chord. Then you get better, you expand that to the four and the five chord. You start figuring out, you know, how to play the minor chords, you know, in a straight line, which is actually really easy, you know. So if here's your C. <laughs> the first three strings. And then, you know, you think you're thinking that shape, or without the slide, do it without the slide, so you can see. You're thinking seven, five, five, five. Although I probably think more about it like this. So I would think like from the high E, five, 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 and then on that G back to two. Then maybe the F. But so you're thinking those arpeggio things. Then you want to be able to, when you add in crazy melodies, you want to be able to play them in a straight line. And then every now and again, if you get a wild hair, you can throw in like a chord, like a scale run with your slide. Or you can use your fingers. You know, I tend to use my slide. Like, so I might do something like that. Like I said, that's not not really like a lick thing, but just how, how to think about it. You know, and you got to think about it's really easy not not to mute things or, you know, let it be sloppy. And you got to You got to got to keep your muting going. And then then you do just have to go for it. There is there is a point where you got to say, OK, I'm just turning it loose, going for it, um, which is fun. Um, 
So there you go. Let me know if you got any questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them either in the comments or I'll make another video. Um, but hopefully that was helpful. Remember, you got to find the right amount of pressure. You don't want to push too hard, but you got to push down hard enough that you, you know, you get a good note. I don't really raise my action, but I also found, you know, I love mag slide because they're so light. Um, you can get ones that sound like, this one's kind of sounds ceramic-y. Got one that sounds like glass. They're all made of like a magnesium alloy, but that's a big deal to me. Like finding one that feels the right way. Like I love glass. I love ceramic ones, but I'm always breaking them. Um, so this was like the perfect solution for me. Fantastic company out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, I have a discount code for them too. I'll put that in the description link. If you made it this far, <laughs> go check that out. Um, they're a little pricey, but they'll last you forever. They're comfortable and they're ridiculously light. I think they make it probably easier to do a lot of things, especially if you're new to slide or if you want something that sounds like glass or ceramic that you won't drop and break. Check them out, Max Slide. Um, like I said, discount code for them too in, in, um, in the description. So there you go. There's enough of my rambly slide thoughts and musings. Have a fantastic night. Day, well, you might not. I'm making this a night, but you might not be watching it. So a fantastic win whenever you're watching. Fantastic week. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you don't miss stuff in the future. Sean and I did record our very first podcast, not for Casino, but for Jonathan, Jonathan Robinson. Um, whatever we call it, Jonathan Robinson Music, YouTube, whatever. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but anyway, so that's coming soon. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you're, if, you, if you're excited to hear that. I'm, I still can't decide. We're going to put it out and do the thing where it's on Spotify and Apple and all that stuff. I can't decide if it's worth putting it up on YouTube. Um, we didn't video it, so it would just be like a, you know, some sort of graphic on the screen. I can't decide if that's lame or not. Let me know. Do you want it on YouTube or would you go listen to it on Spotify? Eventually, the idea is to have a couple cameras up um, and, and to video it too, especially when we have guests. But we'll see. We'll see if we, if we get that far. Anyways, have a great night. Thank you again. See you next time.